Welcome to What You Watching, the cult classics Patreon series. Thank you for subscribing. Cameron Jones here with my co-host. Jordan Michael Jones. Ooh, shouldn't have given away my middle name. Now people are just going to be stealing your identity. Oh, identity right. Good luck finding Jordan Michael Jones. I'm actually most worried that I'm never going to get to be in SAG. I mean, honestly, though, well, that honestly, yeah, that's going to be a serious concern for you. I was about to say, all of your names are so generic, though, that, like, they might be kind of, they might steal someone's identity, just maybe not yours. Yeah, I'd say that the odds are that it's not mine, though. So, we did see a movie in theaters this week, so maybe we'll just kick off with that, because I do know a little Which bit podcast, about podcast, What You Watching? We're doing What You Watching. Mm. The Cold Classics Patreon series, as I announced at the beginning. Uh, glad to see you're fully with us. Uh, we saw the new Nick Cage movie, uh, the incredible weight or the enormous weight of incredible talent. I'm a little vague on the title. Why don't we Why don't we get it. this right for the listeners at home? Yeah, yeah. It seems like we should. Uh, but it's the new Nick Cage movies uh, about Nick Cage going to take a crazy money offer from his agent to some like foreign dictator. It's kind of like the interview. The unbearable weight of massive talent. The unbearable weight of massive talent, starring Nick Cage. Starring Nick it's, Cage. It's it's a lot like uh, without any, this won't have any spoiler alerts uh, in it, but it is very reminiscent of the interview that movie with um, James Franco and uh, Seth Rogen from a few years ago, but like a really good version of it. I'd say movies that are similar to this are meta. I mean, you got uh, being John Malkovich. That's a big one, right? Even right. though. Honest to God, I've never seen it, but I know what it's about, you know? Uh, and that's the only one that comes to the top of my head. Uh, thanks for subscribing to our Patreon. <laughs> no, but it, it was good. Uh, I, we had kind of high expectation management for it because, I mean, Nick Cage is a character and, like, he's built up just this crazy aura and, like, you know, the collective conscious and pop culture. But uh, it, it met my expectations. I, I tried to go in with fairly low expectation management because, as you know, we have a habit of ruining movies with high expectations but it met them it was, it completely was it completely met the expectations i didn't set them too high obviously we'd heard about the reviews in rotten tomatoes and that was like oh no people are really liking this but there was some kernels you, you remember when nick cage did the history of swearing yeah at that point we kind of should have already known if he's not in on the joke he's willing to be the joke true true so i mean He's, it's just more Nick Cage now, just having fun. But again, what, what's good about this movie, and I'll try not to spoil alert, but if I do, you had a week to see it. Get off my ass. It's in the title. <laughs> we'll put it in the title. I'm sorry. Nick Cage is in this. Anyway, what this did well is I think that outside of the subject material, which is a fictionalized version of Nick Cage or the most Nick Cage version, I think mm-hmm. the movie itself had good chemistry to be between the actors and the story was... I guess a little endearing and funny, and that worked. So yeah. I think it was a good movie outside of just the subject material. You know what I mean? No, I, I 100% agree with you. Uh, also, just a fun experience. Uh, we saw this in theaters uh, near my place, and it was an empty theater. It was just me, Jordan, and our ladies uh, going out on a fun date night. Empty theater. Huge theater. Love it. I'll give you a little more background. I thought this was going to be jam-packed, so I text Cameron about a million times on Wednesday prior <laughs> to the Saturday view, and I'm like, we got to get tickets. It's opening weekend. We don't need tuxes, but we got to get our tickets now. <laughs> and I did. I was the first person to buy them. I like a back row. That's just a personal preference. I think you're not an asshole, but ignorant for sitting up front. And it's, it just seems nearly impossible on these big screens and how close some of these seats are to to, to sit up there. Anyway, Cameron it. got there a little early. He's like, "I'm already in the I'm already in the theater. We're the only ones in there." I'm like, "Well, that's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be like a tidal wave of people to see this movie." But it wasn't. It was nope. just the four. It was me, Megan, or I, whatever. It's me, Megan, Cameron, and Nicole. Uh, which it's always cool when you can just talk full volume in a theater without being rude. It's nice. We've talked about it a million times, but it harkens back to when we worked at the movie theater and used to watch movies there all the time after hours. Good I times. mean, that's that's way different. That's a whole different vibe. Well, yeah, because I was also underage and just looking for a place to drink. <clears throat> so apart from the movie we saw, so together, you drink uh, at a local business on Main Street. Sure did. No, no, no. <laughs> no pitfalls there. No, next no the landmines station. there. Right next to the police station and just a stone's throw away from the sheriff's station. Sure was. So we saw that together in theaters. What else have you been watching this week apart from me? Well, this is actually a trickle-down continuation watch from later that night. 
Mm -hmm. went to see your new place, blah, blah, blah. On in the background was naked and afraid. Not on, not in the background. I put it on and we all oh, got it, locked it, it, in. It was event viewing. Sorry. It yeah. was, I just thought it was on TV. I guess it does make well, sense. because we it's put it on, on the TV, but it's not like we were talking and having fun. The main event was we were all of a sudden were locked into naked and afraid. So I've watched pretty much a whole week of that with Megan or half cool. a week. And I've got a lot of thoughts on it. Are you into it at all? Or is it just something now that I accidentally hooked Megan on it and now you're watching a bunch of it? I'd say it's more that, but since I've, since I've clocked so many hours, it's like I have a... I have strong opinions on things. Okay, such as give me some. So here's one of my favorite things. And listeners, Mm -hmm. this is gonna be some real deep dive into Naked and Afraid. So if you haven't watched (laughs) it a lot, I can't help you. It's on Discovery Plus and Hulu. If you don't know the premise, which you should, because it's been on for a long time, many years, you take two survivalists, you strip them completely naked, you drop them in like some in some hard environment for 21 days and see who can make it. See who taps out. There's no cash reward. It's just a pride thing. Now go on, Jordan. Uh, they have no resources except like a hatchet or a piece of flint. Oh, yeah. live fire. You get a, they have no clothes, one, one piece of, they have no tool. food and they, they now get like a pot to boil their water. Cause I think there was a lot of problems seasons one through six with that. I can, I can like, imagine. Oh, you guys are just getting I don't know. like water poison. Yeah. Water yeah. poisoning. Anyway, here's one of my favorite things. I love people's, because I've seen so many of these episodes, Mm -hmm. people um, in their entrance video interviews, like, I'm so psyched to show my skills. I can't wait for this. And I've seen so many of these episodes. It's an awful experience. Just an (laughs) awful, people just get dehydrated and starve themselves. And some of them outside of like four who are legitimate, legitimate survivalists. I think I've seen about four of them are like, holy shit, they could live. Most people are just deteriorating and they make it to 31 days. I feel like I'm watching prisoners of war more than survivalists. Yeah. And that's why it's so engaging, Jordan. See, that is the fun. The the more headstrong someone comes in, typically the quicker they are to come out for mosquito bites and like, well, that's one of my like selfishly favorite thing. It's like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to make this my bitch. I told everybody at work, I'm making a 21 days and then cut to them just throwing up and shitting everywhere. It's (laughs) like, I drank the water. Dave Dave forced me. Like I've never heard this bad. Oh my God. (laughs) Okay. So that I think, that people will get sick because they're not used to drinking water. Yeah, but what's even happen. funnier is someone who's got like they're full of shit. They're like talking like their expertise on living, you know, naked and you know, with no right, resources. Right. <laughs> and they're they're hyping up their partner who they're stuck with for probably 21 days. And then about a day and a half, they're like, this sucks. I'm quitting. I think you can make it, though. I love when they're like, no, it's not what I'm doing. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Dude, it is nice, though. It is nice when those people are really whining, complaining, and dragging the team down, and they do leave, and you see that partner thrive. I'm like, oh, turns out my problem was that person the whole time. It's nice to see that. Occasionally, they do tap out as well, which is sad. But um, Yeah, I do think that if your partner quits, you need your partner there, even if they're a buzzkill and not helpful. You need them there the first three days to help set up camp. You have to set up camp. But then after that, get the fuck out of there. Oh, I wish I could remember what that, what do they call them? A Swama, a Bama. God, I learned a word. They're always using a word for what their hut. It turns out you didn't learn a word. God damn it. This is too early. What what you did was hear a word a lot, Jordan. Oh Jesus. This is, you know, one tactic I do like, and I only saw a few people do this. Well, I would go extreme. I would put on like 50 pounds of weight specifically to lay around and just deteriorate on a jungle floor somewhere. That's how I'd get through it. Oh, actually, I've thought about that. I have no survivalist skills, but since I'm chubby, I could probably just lay there. Was chubby. Well, I, well, yeah, especially when I was more chubby. I would be not helpful. I would be hated by my teammate. I would get <laughs> insulted because when people are starving, they, they throw oh, insults pretty, pretty freely. Mean, yeah. It's real mean. I heard one lady say she was she was on the edge. Uh, she was about to quit. This is right. normally what happens when you're about to quit. You uh, insult someone and then you just go dead like you got a Dementor's kiss because your soul's gone because you're starving. <laughs> so anyway, she told her partner, you know what? You're lazy and all you do is lay there and you're fat and you smelled. And you smelled before we started this. I think she apologized <laughs> a little bit later. It's like, now that we have this piece of crab, I'm sorry. There's a lot of apologies <laughs> post-eating. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, I'd get insulted, but I could probably just lay there and not exert any calories and just let my body I mean, eat itself for 21 days. You're still going to need water. That's going to be the hardest thing. You're going to have to use some energy for that. That's and true. You on- do need water. And honestly, I think the thing that's going to get me is just the cold. I can't take being outside in like sometimes 50, like four degrees completely naked. I think I'm more prone to dying of hypothermia than other people. 
So most of them are in desert locations, mountain esque, but like still desert or tropical locations. Right. I have seen a few that are in cold weather, which and is they bullshit. only they only have to go fourteen days, but nobody makes it because it's too fucking. It's cold. impossible. Except well, I saw this one All Star Crew. You, you, I'm guessing by now you've seen a few Swamp episodes, right? Yeah, the one Those of the best guys I ever saw. Those impossible. Those. Did you see the terrible. swamp guy that killed an alligator? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's that early guy's... on. It's like season one stuff. I'm pretty sure. He got called back for a, an All Star episode. Of course he did. Yeah, he killed an alligator. And um, it was in this this island with sharks, and they were fucking everywhere. And everybody's like, "Oh, this guy's a man. We saw him kill an alligator." He went in the water. He's like, "Guys, I'm not gonna fuck around with all these sharks here. I'm, I'm done going in the water." Everybody's like. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, like, cool. I get it. But no, seriously, if you watch that shark episode, Cameron, this is more just um, a recommendation from you. It is mm. crazy. There's sharks <laughs> everywhere. everywhere. I think it's called shark attack. Anyway. Sometimes it is just crazy dangerous. Like that one we're talking about, they drop them like in the middle of a swamp and like there are just alligators everywhere and there's no dry land. Like I'm pretty sure he gets trench foot, doesn't he, by the end of it or something? No, I don't think he does. He um, might be a later episode. He actually but, uh, does so well at the end of it. He stays there no no he goes he lost his partner and she was okay i think she ended up getting sick or something but um he wrote down on a piece of wood thrive (laughs) and he's the only person outside of like two that i've seen like i actually think he could like most of these people i'm like oh if the challenge was 42 days you'd be dead or you'd be really like you made it to 21 but by no means did you thrive or survive here or this guy would have in in a year been a Swiss family Robinson. He would have had a tree house. He would have had like a pretty decent wardrobe. He would have had like hanging meat. Well, that is one thing I do want to talk about though, because the aftermath of these is always so crazy. Like they'll be hospitalized for like, well, I'm still in South Africa. I've been here for about three months. Cause like I was bit by 4,000 mosquitoes and they, they all yeah. were carrying diseases and yeah. they're all so sick afterwards that it just does not seem worth it. This is the most talking I've ever done for our Patreon. And it's been naked and afraid because I'm so I've, in it right now. I've never been so happy that I've gotten one of my shitty Discovery Plus channel shows to rub off on you and your lady. Oh, just get into the, the ghost shows. We'll have so much in common. I just don't want to do ghost shows. I could watch a ghost meme and maybe. You're, well, it's, you're, it's, you're, it's the same trash you're getting out of it. It's not necessarily. Well, I do like, you know, weird. No, naked and afraid par- really, really stuff. unique singular show. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, because it has a lot of that weird, crazy hydro. Oh, can I say one thing I definitely would do? I know it's time-consuming, but after you got your... Shoes? Make shoes? You got it. Nobody makes shoes. Nobody tries. Everybody's spending all this fucking time making, like, a straw hat, which I think is important for some people if you're going to get sunburned. Mm. But then they're like, oh, my God, these thorns are ripping my feet up. It's like, fucking put something on your feet, guys. Uh, crying out loud. I do. There is like an episode where the first thing someone does is weave a giant hat. And I do appreciate that. They were just going around with like a sombrero the whole island. That's like so, ingenious. I you mean, you why can tell you, you can I mean, tell people that do have real survivor skills because yeah. they're doing it. And you can tell how annoyed they are when they get hooked up with a weakened warrior that doesn't have survival <laughs> skills. Uh, okay, so to get off this, because who knew we would be so invested in Naked and Afraid? Well, I did because it's a great show. <laughs> Uh, but I did watch the Naked Love Island one pretty much, but it's like, oh, I do have questions about that. So there is a spinoff of Naked and Afraid, Naked and Afraid of Love that I haven't gotten desperate enough to dip into, but it seems crazy. Is there boning? There has to be some sort of sex. So I never got to boning. I watched one episode. It was really long, but they have like six couples and they all start at different points on an island or wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you guys can make camp here. And if you're vibing, whatever, or you can go to this next point and meet up with more people and pretty much switch. I think it would be impossible for me to fall in love with anybody who smells just musky and gross and has been living outside for like. Yeah, years. so I haven't I haven't seen any sex, but but this one it's you, you might not because of that, you know. Th- th- this this iteration is um it's it's much more easy and livable for them. Like they give them a like a hut. That's kind of pre-built. There's plenty of water. There's places they can cook. So, yes. Okay, so it's more of just like, let's hang out naked outside. Yeah, they do still have to, they still have to, you know, provide for themselves, but it's much easier. Okay. You know, because if it. That was one of my questions, because I feel like it'd be, unless all they're saying is like, a lot of those scenes on regular Naked and Afraid, when we're cuddling for body heat at night, we're cutting out about two hours of boning footage. Well, I wonder that. They they do never show that, and I don't know. That's because they film themselves at night. (laughs) I I, I agree, but it's probably tough to have sex with someone that's dead eye and throwing up like for four hours. (laughs) Like, just take your time. Whenever you're ready, I'll be here. Oh, would you cuddle? Would you cuddle? I think Again, have you to. have to for body heat. I would be so cold. 
Yeah, you'd have to. All the time. Okay, okay that's enough Naked and Afraid. Uh, so something else I did watch. Have you ever watched the 1995 movie Copycat? No, I don't even think I've heard it. I'll look it up. Uh, it's a, it's a mystery thriller from 95. I hadn't either, but I got sold because it's star. Well, I don't want to say starring Harry Connick Jr., but Sigourney Weaver, Holly Hunter, uh, uh, Dermot Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney, Will Patton, John Rothman, J.E. Freeman, William Holt. Yeah, that's pretty much Pretty big cast. So the whole concept is Sigourney Weaver is like a psychologist who specifically has been studying psychopaths. And now psychopaths have begun to idolize her. Deeply and- shaken after being assaulted by a danger man, Harry Connick Jr., Dr. Helen Hudson, Sigourney mm-hmm. Weaver, must face her fears if she is to help solve a series of murders. Helen is a psychologist who has studied serial killers, but in this case, in which the crime scene molded on the work of infamous deviants, is grimmer than most. With the help of two San Francisco police officers, Holly Hunt and Dermot Mulroney. See, isn't it hard to say quickly sometimes? Because <laughs> it should be Dermot. Yeah, right. And it's you want- Dermot. It's D-E-R-M-O-T. Helen tries to become the murder. Isn't this just murder she wrote the movie? Okay, so here's the thing. This actually, it's a little heavy handed because essentially the whole thing is there's some, a copycat killer recreating famous serial killers, but it works now that like just true crime is so big again and we're having like a wave because the whole movie, because the whole movie is like, what serial killer is this doing? Like they'll be describing a crime scene. It's Sigourney Weaver typing on her 1995 computer being like, oh, tied to a chair, blah, blah, blah. This must be like the BTK killer. And like, it was fun for me and my fiance playing along at home because we'd see a crime scene and we're like, oh, is this Gacy? No, this is blah, blah, blah. And granted, they... I mean, it wasn't exactly fact heavy, so they got some things wrong. But just as true crime podcast listeners and aficionados, it was kind of fun just playing along with this murder mystery. Again, it was heavy handed a little bit and it wasn't great, but it was enjoy enjoyable. It was fun. Did it feel like noir the, the couple. So Rotten Tomatoes actually kind aren't of, horrible it, scores. Oh, like, yeah. It's not a good movie, but I'm saying just it's not because, bad, though. And it must move and be entertained. It's two hours and three minutes. That's a little bit of a. It was a little long, but the, the whole reason it was fun is just because we're into true crime, so we got to play along with their, like, big, obvious clues as to who it was. So we were just kind of doing a guess who while the movie was going on. Again, the acting wasn't great. The plot's not, I mean, it's not great, but it was enjoyable. And again, I've been doing a lot of just 90s movies it's just for a slower pace feel of film. And I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm in a 90s kick right now. I've got a question. 90s is obviously our nostalgic, but yeah. I, there's great movies. Uh, I love, you know, classic movies, but not everybody does. I'd say that's more of a niche market. Mm-hmm. Is Indiana Jones, is a kid going to grow up now and watch Indiana Jones without being forced by their parent? Or is that just something that now it's 30 years old? Like how many movies did we watch from mm-hmm. the 70s growing up? Quite a few, but I mean, also pop culture is big we're in our right. house. So I don't know. I think it's hard to say. I mean, if you have an interest in movies, and stuff, it'll still... This has been an argument with us for a while just because there's such a massive content all the time. Like, how many of these things are just going to become niche that we grew up on that are like Mel Brooks movies and things like that that might not get passed down to kids? Well, on the flip side, the cult classics, I would say that things that were modern day classics with us, even if they were big hits, will fall by the wayside because there is so much content that you're like, oh, just any movie from the 90s is a cult classic now or some new term. You know what I mean? I mean, well, I mean, yeah, it'll probably just be some new term, but yeah, I, I, I get what you're throwing out. Uh, but it was enjoyable, and I just, I mean, I don't know, Harry Connick Jr. I don't know why he's so big in our family, but it's always fun to see him in a film. I mean, he's really only in three I know of, and I only used to know of two, but you just suggested a new one. Yeah, Copycat. which is why when I saw the thumbnail, I'm you like, got oh. Memphis Bell. Hope floats in this. Uh, wasn't he in South Pacific in the nineties too around this time? That was like a TV version. Let's not, yeah, I think okay, still, uh, but it also, I like Dermot Mul- Mulroney. I mean, he's always charming and everything he's in, in the nineties and now. So, and, yeah. uh, and the family stone, do you still feel that? Dude, I, I, for as much as you talk about it, I've only seen it twice and I didn't even remember he was in it. Oh, I watched it. It's like the, I only the remember brother. like the scene where the mom's like, I am not spoiler. It's been out for a while, but when the mom ruins Christmas with cancer, and yeah what a real big i'm oh, sorry i can't say that word anymore <laughs> what a real big downer stupid <laughs> breast she was it was selfish the way she did it but you know um what else have you been watching honestly been no time for movies because i've been watching so much naked and afraid what i am <laughs> right. gonna see maybe this weekend I'm, I'm gonna see that new fantastic beast i want to see that 
I heard pretty good reviews from my band members and friends. They, I mean, they said better than the second one, but that doesn't seem hard to do. I mean, Not that's normally quite the way it goes. As good as the first, but they said it was it was more entertaining. It's back on the right track again, is what I heard. I really like that first one. The, yeah, the second first one, was one great. the second one was just clunky and all over the place, but like the look of it, the feel of it was still good. Yeah. And this one's gonna go real deep into Dumbledore. It's called Dumbledore Secrets or something like that. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited to learn what you hiding in there, Dumbledore. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, I hear you've been actually watching a lot of, and we don't have to go into detail of this because we don't want to be wrong, but right. you have been watching the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard. My my fiance for sure has funny. I mean, TikTok, it's just all over social media. So like, even if I, I watched a few days of the trial. I mean, if you haven't caught any of it, it's been YouTube and just different channels have been live streaming the the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I'm sure you've seen coverage of this everywhere, so you don't need necessarily. Okay, we're not going to um, delve in it because we don't want to be on the wrong side of history. Let's let history play out, and then we'll comment. <laughs> okay, then we'll comment it when it's done. Because like right now, we're not going to tell you who we're leaning, but you know, we don't want to be wrong. <laughs> uh, so just for me, I mean, I've, we talk about it all the time, but I've been leaning real back into Harry Potter two as my go to sleep movie for the past like. Really week and a half. It's just been living on HBO Max on my Here's TV why Harry background. Potter 2 is... A little scary for you? Oh, it was when I was growing up. That was the first book I read. And I was all <laughs> grounded at home. Not in life, but pretty close. Um, you know, I I read that alone. Like The first book the you read for you, would you say? N- um, for you. Yeah, maybe. I suppose you could be right. Anyway, I was going to tell a dumb story that doesn't matter. It, it gets scary. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it gets a little whispery, parcel tongue is scary, but I don't know. I just, I would prefer, I prefer two to one. I want to keep it in the Christopher Columbus, happy, bright lighting in the Harry Potter world. It's just mm, a the warm lighting. Yeah. Man. It's just a nostalgic, happy comfort food of a movie for me. That, so I mean, that's it's one a thing great I, to go to bed movie. That's one thing I truly dislike about some interpretation of movies. Just because the tone, the subject matter turns dark doesn't literally mean you need a gray blue filter on the whole entire film. No, uh, yeah, I agree with that. That does bug I really me. dislike that. Like you could still have eh, whatever. You could still have warm moments. Now, obviously, those are kids' movies and they, they really really they really do play a lot more kiddies, but the books are kind Which of kids' is, books more than young I, adult I stick books. The, well, it's also just I like Christopher Columbus's storytelling in the early movies. I like his I like I like his storytelling. I like his directing, so I try to stick towards one too. After um after that reunion special came out on Still HBO haven't Max, seen it. I when it's, I watch it's, it's that, really good. That'll when I watch jazzed. it, Harry Potter is done. You know what I mean? Then I have nothing, Jordan. Nothing. Okay, then never watch it. It can, it can always be. Anyway, that got me re uh, real excited. So I bought a couple books. Real mm-hmm. re, been listening to them because like Harry them. Potter or just books. <laughs> Bought a couple of the Harry Potter books. I bought three. I'm like, that'll, that'll tide me over. But then I listened to like twice or three times. Yeah. Like walking to and from work. Do you know another solution? You could try other books. I have, but like for, for, for commuting, you know, whatever. I, I I bought ones I wanted, you know, I got 112263 because I just like played something on YouTube and it was clearly the, it was, well, they announced it. it was the author narrating the book. Sometimes you should get a professional reader. It was, All the time, you should. It you was should clunky. not just get a professional reader. You should get. Well, actor. because sometimes the, you want, like, if Snoop Dogg has a book, I want him to read his autobiography. It's there only are, short stories and autobiographies that you want the the person that wrote. One hundred percent. But like, I could hear the, you could hear the author flipping the page and pausing until the next word. It was painful. Ah. Well, that that it. should also. I mean, did they? They must have recorded it themselves then as well. No, it was a professional recording. Well, then they should have gotten that out of the there. Author. It I got to be honest. One of the best narrate. I mean, outside of Jim Dale, obviously, blah, blah, blah. I cannot remember his name, but if you ever listen to Joyland by Stephen King, that narrator is fucking awesome. I wish he did a lot more books. Let me look it up. I will look it up for you. And then we'll get out of this. We, we've talked probably... about it before. It's uh, I know what he's in. It's He's the balding actor. He's mm-hmm. in... Oh, God. Um, I'm spacing. You'll get to it in like five seconds anyway. I just need to kill this dead air by saying something. Hop, 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 hop. It's Michael Kelly. Michael Kelly. Yeah, never would have gotten there. Um, He is a character actor. I would say he is most notably... God damn. Dawn of the Dead. Maybe Cameron knows him from that the most. Oh, yeah, that's sure what he is. He's the sheriff. He's the dick cop in Dawn of the Dead, the remake from the yeah. 2000s. I mean, he's in a lot of stuff because he's a character actor. I'd say... And this he's, is uh, actually he's like a reporter, maybe in Zodiac or something, or or uh, he is in Zodiac. Yeah, yeah. there we go. He, he's actually in a movie, and I and I remember from this. Do you remember um, Adjustment Bureau with Matt Damon and Emily Blunt from? Yeah, 2011? that movie was almost really good. I 
think it was just entertaining and good. There's there's two movies that came out around well, that time that I'm I like say that is because I saw it once and I forgot I, I forgot about it. Is it is forgettable, but if right you watch now. it, it's good. And then sure, it's what, what's a time movie with Justin Timberlake? It's I think like it's about one, time. I, no, that's that. That's 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 the other one. Time something time in trap, time in time. Yeah, it's like a two word like another. Yeah, yeah, you're close. That one's see that one's almost good. That one's closer, almost good. I think adjustment Burt Bureau. That one is might just, just be good. good. I just kind of for, I it's just called it. in time with Amanda Seyfried. Seyfried, I'm a Seyfrider. I'm a probably whatever's wrong, <laughs> whatever isn't right. That's definitely the one I go with. Well, maybe we'll wrap it up for here. We haven't watched too much this week, but uh, you know what? Tonight's movie night with the ladies, so I'm gonna I'm gonna log off and go watch myself a movie. Um, and probably this Patreon's just gonna become a naked and afraid podcast, so <laughs> That's buckle in for that. Entirely up to you and what you start watching for the next few weeks. Alright, well thanks for listening. You know what? Maybe switch it up, give us Naked and Afraid of Love, Naked and Afraid XL. That way you at least have three different things to talk about. Well, I could do that right now. I've watched all of them. Well, save it for next week. Thanks for listening, right. everybody.